This is a really excellent way to start improving your ability to identify the unique characteristics among your favorite guitar players. And this is a really important skill to have because your favorite guitar players have their own unique style, but then within each individual song, there's usually a unique flavor with regards to that style. So today we're taking a look at Stevie Ray Vaughan's cover of May I Have a Talk With You, and uh, he makes it really apparent um, on how you can utilize this skill because he's always using you know the same shapes, but he's just basically changing things up in a really minimalist way uh, to create a unique sound and a, new, a unique flavor. Um, so of course, if you do find this helpful and you know you want to leave a comment with another song um, that you'd like to see broken down in this way, uh, feel free to leave that in the comment section. And of course, you know like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find this helpful. It's always deeply appreciated. And uh, with that, let's just jump in on this. So I'm actually gonna link a backing track up here. I'm tuned down half a step, so is Stevie Ray Vaughan, always. Um, so this backing track will be uh, lined up with that tuned down half a step if that's how you wanna approach things. Um, but if you wanna stay in standard tuning, I will now link another uh, backing track right there and you can mess around with these licks over those backing tracks. Um, and uh, I'll start with the first one, and I'll, I'll just basically say that I'm kind of breaking these up into different levels. Um, and don't think about it as, okay, I'm intermediate, let me only use the level two lick. That's not how I'm trying to break things down. I'm just basically breaking them down from most accessible to maybe, you know, most difficult. But that doesn't mean you know, the beginner player can't maybe experiment with level three, and that doesn't mean the advanced player can't, you know, can't hammer level one to continue to refine their own skills and maybe play it at an even faster tempo. I'm gonna flash the tabs. Um, when they flash, go ahead and screenshot them so you can have them for later on on your own time. Um, feel free to pause the video because I'm not gonna spend too much time lingering on the tabs. And then uh, let's just break down a couple things you need to focus there and we'll move on to the other two licks and then you'll go have fun uh, experimenting with them with the backing track. So here's the close up of the level one lick. Here you go. <laughs> All right, so now that you've seen it, let's actually just do a quick deep dive on it um, just so you have things to focus on. I think that's really important as you're practicing things to have this like cognitive understanding, this cognitive attachment to what's going on. Um, so that half step slide, like I was saying, make it really clean, take as much time as you need on just that individual part. So if you're a beginner player, just hammer that, you know, hammer that slide, half step slide for, you know, five to 10 reps, so to speak, right? Wait for a second, reset. That's fair game. That's gonna help improve your skills and uh, a mantra I try to live by with regards to learning the guitar is uh, fast is slow, slow is fast. So nailing that half step slide. Interesting component is skipping a string. So that high E going back to the G. So just being really conscious of that, that the skills required to, to nail that small lick um, is really important for developing your skills. But more of you intermediate advanced players use the backing track as a way to hammer this lick real time, full speed, and do the same thing. Assess yourself, right? Did that entire lick sound great? Did, you know, that slide sound a little sloppy? So maybe same thing, you go back to the slide um, for a few reps, or you just get really conscious of it as you're playing through. Um, so the second lick, a little more difficult um, because I think there's a bend that is a little tougher. Uh, again, Stevie Ray was a, a master of just nailing a really clean, tight, um, structured bend, and uh, it can be pretty difficult to nail that, you know, myself included. Uh, so this next lick has a big bend in it. It's in the same shape. We actually have a video about this small shape. I think Buddy Guy really hammered this shape in a beautiful way. So we have another video on that if you wanna kinda of do a deep dive. Uh, I'm pointing here because I'm gonna link it here. Um, but if you wanna do a deep dive on that little blues shape, uh, definitely check that out. Um, but this next lick, big bend, uh, staying in that shape. Let's check that out, level two. Just like the previous lick, some of you might be prepared to play that full speed. So if that's the case, you can enjoy the backing track or you can maybe play it at a faster metronome if that's what you need to progress. But 
For a lot of you, I am sure that that, you know, that full step bend could be difficult and could create some problems. So you don't wanna skip that and then just try to finish it off quickly. Really try to nail that initial bend because if you were able to complete the previous lick, um, you will have the skills to finish this off. Uh, you just might not want to rush that bend and say, okay, I'm ready to do that and on to level three. What makes this unique is being able to emulate that really strong bend that Stevie Ray Vaughan hits. And again, you can take away the backing track, you can take away the metronome and just refine the skill of a huge bend. And then maybe every fourth or fifth bend, then you try to finish off the lick. But you may want to start by sounding it out similar to learning to read, you know, that's where you're going to be starting. You're going to be starting on the eighth fret, but you're going to want to make it sound like the tenth fret. And, you know, Stevie Ray does that in a very specific way. So you don't want to be judgmental. You know, when I do my own practice in this way, it's not going to be sharing information like this. It's going to be a lot of focus. So right now I'll show you, but I don't want to be judgmental here and you shouldn't be either. <laughs> but let me sound that out. There's some room for improvement. Not, not my worst ever. Um, it's not the worst thing ever, but some room for improvement. You know, certainly it could be a lot cleaner. And that's up to me to take my time and maybe just isolate that piece of the lick over the backing track. So maybe I am prepared for the backing track if I just isolate that portion of the lick. Um, but, you know, similar to the, the previous lick, take your time, assess where your skill level's at, um, assess where you need to improve inside the lick. And then, of course, you know, have fun if you want to. You can, you know, be really structured about the first time you go through the backing track. And then you could say, screw it. Let me try to piece all of these together. But let's jump into the third lick. Um, basically, the thing that makes this lick unique is that it does now inject that standard SRV line, in my mind, is the, you know, for me, that's like the classic Stevie Ray intro to a lot of his solos, a lot of his lines, a lot of his phrasing in between lyrics. Um, so it contains that. And the one thing that he does to create this unique flavor using that lick is he just lingers on the top two strings. He repeats them like this. And he does that a few times throughout the song, so listen up for that. But that basically creates this ultimate you know, unique flavor of the song. It's definitely the thing that I think he comes back to the most um, to really solidify that aspect. I think if you played those notes and you knew Stevie Ray Vaughan, you go, oh, may I have a talk with you? Um, so that's the big unique flavor, but that's a really easy one because it's such a small phrase to throw into your own playing and it can be unique to you because it's just an ingredient that you're using in this big, um, in this big meal, so to speak. I don't know if that's the greatest analogy, um, but hopefully that makes some sense. So. Anyways, let's take a look at this lick and uh, close up on the hands, tabs again, and uh, we'll finish off with breaking this down. So let's take a look, level three, close up. <laughs> Just like the other licks, take your time, use the same principles, have fun with this. If you thought this was helpful, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel for more easy guitar practice. And for now, again, have fun, and we look forward to seeing you next time.